This week, I'm going to talk about something that I haven't quite figured out yet. So I'm still working on it, but I know we all go through it. So I wanted to share it so we can work on it, experiment with it, maybe find a solution together. So how do you get stuff done when you really don't feel like it? And when you know your best work comes from a place of enthusiasm and flow. Welcome to Explore Your Enthusiasm, episode 208 with me, Tara Swiger. You can find the transcript and links to everything I'm going to talk about at taraswiger.com slash podcast 208. And as a reminder, you can always find the transcripts from every episode at taraswiger.com slash podcast then the podcast number. So this is podcast 208. Here's the thing. I know for sure after much experimentation that my best work comes when I'm feeling enthusiastic, when I'm feeling in the flow, when I'm feeling good. Whether I'm excited about the actual project I'm working on or I'm just in that mood where I just want to get stuff done. Either way, being in the mood to work turns out the best work. Being in a place of wanting to work is when I'm most effective, I'm fastest, and I'm most creative. And I feel so blessed and I realize it's a privileged position to be able to get in the mood of wanting to work and being able to do creative work. And um, I feel, I'm just so grateful that I feel in the flow and like wanting to work about 98% of the time when it's time for work, I want to. That's awesome. Except sometimes I'm not. And sometimes you're not either. And when it's just every once in a while, it's no big deal. It's actually good to just take a break, not work, heal up, rest, introvert recovery, whatever it is I need. But there are times in life when that not wanting to work or that total lack of enthusiasm is a chronic ongoing issue. And this can happen for a bunch of different reasons. Some recent examples in the Starship and in my own life is if after a friend or a family member dies, or when you get some really bad news, or when you're recovering from an ongoing illness or issue or car accident, or if you're dealing with hormonal issues and your hormones all are all over the place, or when you're having a bout of anxiety or depression. That ongoing, I don't want to work, I don't feel enthusiastic, goes on for so long, it doesn't feel like you can just not work because you're not, you're not feeling excited about it. And it's in these times that my just don't work when you don't feel like it actually becomes a problem and it doesn't feel like much of a solution at all. So this winter, I was traveling a lot and I was feeling tired and like I needed introvert recovery a lot after those trips. So I experimented with just resting or reading when I truly had no enthusiasm for work. And it felt like I recovered from those trips faster and I got in the place to work much quicker than if I had just powered through. But I'm going to be totally honest, I also felt awful for the time I didn't work. I felt like I really slowed down my business pro progress by just totally checking out on those days. And I felt massive guilt that, of course, the massive guilt made me feel even worse, which is not great. So recently, I've been dealing with another bout of anxiety. And it often it's the kind that often ends up with not wanting to do anything, not caring about anything, not being enthusiastic. And I started to ask myself, is this just not working when I don't feel enthusiastic about it? Is it the right way to go? Or does it just exacerbate the problem? Does it just keep me in a place of not wanting to work because I don't get in the flow and the enthusiasm of working, which sometimes can make me feel better? But I want to be clear, <laughs> after you've lost a loved one or when you're ill, you definitely need to take a break. You need to do whatever you need to do to heal. So this might mean stopping all work, or it might be doing the work that brings you joy. Like, I don't want you to get so hung up on the ideal of I need to not work, that you don't do the work that brings you lots of joy. But I want to talk about what do you do when the enthusiasm, unenthusiasm is like chronic and it just keeps going. Is it possible your work is a source of joy that's going to help you feel better? So then if it is, do you push yourself to do it because sometimes just showing up will get you in the flow? Or do you not push yourself because pushing yourself feels horrible? Or do you just keep resting until your enthusiasm returns? Does not working help you get to that enthusiasm faster or does it slow it down? I don't know. <laughs> These are questions that I have that I'm experiencing with it. I do know that everyone's going to have a slightly different answer or maybe a radically different answer. And I know that each situation, even in the same person's life, is going to require something a little bit different. I know that needing introvert recovery after a trip is different than feeling the anxiety that leads to total unenthusiasm and lack of desire for anything. This is one of those 
situations, which by the way, almost everything in your business is, where having a blanket statement, like saying, only work when you're feeling great, the blanket statement is not going to work. So I experimented with this, but I am still figuring it out. And yesterday when I wasn't feeling well, I talked to Jay about it, and he made some suggestions that this morning I was like, oh, I should share this with you guys. I'm going to start experimenting with these suggestions and some that I added on my own, and I wanted to share them with you so you can experiment with them too if you're going through something like this as well. Um, I hope that what you take from this is not a list of rules or of things to do, but that you ask yourself some questions about what's going to work best for you and for whatever you're going through right now. And maybe don't try to figure it out when you're not feeling your best. If you're feeling good and enthusiastic about your work, think about the times when you didn't and figure this out when you're feeling good. Make a plan for when you're not feeling good, but make those plans when you're feeling better. Does that make sense? So trying to figure it out when I'm in a bout of anxiety is like the total wrong thing to do. Instead, just, just try some stuff and be okay with not feeling okay. So my first suggestion, don't keep asking yourself if you feel okay or if you feel like working or if you feel anxious or if you feel sad. This is, now this is entirely based on me. You might not ever ask yourself that, and so you need to get a little more tapped in and mindful of how you're feeling. But for me, this is the worst thing I can do for my anxiety is to let it constantly question the nature of my reality. It just totally drives me up a wall. So I need to set boundaries around when I will work and when I won't work and stick with them. Show up to do the work even if I don't feel like it. Many of you find that when you do that, when you just create the boundaries, especially in the beginning of your business of when you will work and won't work, the flow comes as soon as you get into the place where you do the work, right? Like you feel like working after you get into it. And uh, most writers' advice uh, for writers say, like, sit down at the same time every day and start typing. The writing will come. The same is true in your creative business in many situations. Obviously not dire situations, but there are a lot when just showing up will solve the problem. Number two, have a list of things that don't require enthusiasm. So for me, this is things like clearing out my inbox of all those not pressing emails. Like I answer pressing emails within a couple days, but everything else, it's like, you should think about this. Here's a book recommendation. Here are some random newsletters. Here's a coupon code for something I never buy. All, all of those I deal with when I'm not enthusiastic and I don't need to be smart or energetic or creative. Um, also, things like making up essential oil samples, signing and sending out books, updating my accounting software with my recent receipts. None of that needs enthusiasm, and I don't ever need to feel like doing that in order to do it well. For you, this might be something like printing shipping labels, updating your monthly numbers tracker, doing production work that's kind of boring, like cutting out a lot of the same shapes over and over. Um, the bonus of these boring tasks is that you can listen to a podcast, an audiobook, or music that's going to totally lift your mood. So by having a list of things that you do when you're unenthusiastic, they help you show up to work and know what you're going to do without having to like, oh, what should I do? I don't know. I don't feel good enough for that without flailing around so much. So my third suggestion is at the end of the day, even if it's a day you took off, like you couldn't work, you couldn't get out of bed, you couldn't focus, you don't feel like you did anything, make a list of what you got done. Oh, you know what? Like my 3.5 suggestion, like my three and a half suggestion is... When you simply can't focus, give yourself permission to just stop. Don't keep going if you literally can't focus or think or plan or just let it go. Does that's, that's actually like number one that we I assumed that we all came to this with. It's okay to take days off. So even if you took a day off and it's like not a normal day off, it's a, it's a bad day and that's why you took it off, make a list at the end of it of what you got done. So like I answer Facebook messages almost without exclusion every Monday through Friday, because that's where I do some of my best customer service and my best mentoring. So even if that's all I did, it's important and it's worthy of celebration. I help some people. Yay! If you post on Instagram, if you make dinner, if you uh, read a couple articles you've been meaning to read, celebrate it. Celebrate it. This is so super important. This is not just like feel good stuff. This is super important because one of the things that makes me feel bad about feeling bad is when I feel like I've rested too much or I've not worked enough, and so I'm not allowed to rest anymore. Now, if one of you told me this, I would tell you that that made no sense and was total BS and to take care of yourself, whatever you need. But honestly, I'm just being honest. This is what I say to myself. So by celebrating 
what I got done. I'm never feeling like any day was a total waste and therefore I'm not allowed to rest today because last week I already had a lost day. Does that make sense? Total mind tricks. Number four, notice when you feel guilty and work on letting go of it. The best uh, answer I found to this is to consciously forgive yourself like you'd forgive someone you loved. Now, I'm not saying you need forgiveness for resting and that, and that you need to forgive yourself from taking the day off. No, of course you don't. But this is taking a minute to forgive yourself, even if you don't need to forgive yourself, but you're mad at yourself, is it can diffuse all the guilt around it. Sometimes the easiest thing to do, and this is true for people in your life as well, is just to forgive the thing, whether it needs forgiveness or not, consciously think about forgiving it. Just it's going to diffuse a lot of the guilt. So um, there is a, I believe it's Hawaiian forgiveness method, and it's called Ho'oponomo. I'm going to link it up. I'm going to look it up and link it up. But you basically say about the thing, I forgive you. I'm sorry. I love you. Say it to yourself about the thing, right? You took the day off. You shouldn't have taken the day off. You should have got more done, blah, blah, blah. I forgive you for doing that. I'm sorry that you felt like you're not allowed to do it. And I love you. That's it. Doing that, and I could even feel, like loosens up some of the tension and the uh, frustration around it. Now, the next step, do stuff that makes you feel good. Do it during your work day, do it before your work day, do it after your work day. So I'm gonna just give you some examples. For me, it's listening to Spotify playlists, it's walking the dogs and looking at local flowers, it's reading books, it's drinking coffee, it's making a chocolate smoothie. Your list might be totally different. Your list can be whatever you want it to be. Your list could be taking naps, your list could be knitting for a couple minutes, your list could be calling up a friend and chatting with them. Um, your list could be going to a coffee shop and like having a big croissant or something whatever make up a list ahead of time refer to it again and again and it's such like kismet <laughs> one of my favorite artists Amy of Amy's Not Dead Yet uh she that's her name on Twitter and Instagram her website is antemortemarts.com she just made a print and there's a, a printable version you can get to print it out on yourself that is a whole list of things you can do to take care of yourself things like drink a glass of water listen to music pet your pet um she also makes a uh bookmarks that have those suggestions on them. So keep your list handy of things you can do that will make you feel good. The sixth step, which is also kind of the first step, is to quit whenever you want. If you showed up, did anything on your list, did something that felt good, and you still don't feel great or you can't focus, give yourself total permission to celebrate the fact you showed up, then give yourself total permission to do something else. That something else might be something that feels good, that something else might be a nap, that something else might be just um, doing the things you have to do in your life, like going grocery shopping, picking up the kids and running errands. Now you don't want those things to regularly take over your workday, but if you're finding you're not being able to focus on your workday, trust me when I say sitting there and forcing yourself or beating yourself up that you can't force yourself is not going to lead to a more productive day today or tomorrow. Sometimes letting it go and walking away will like build up that, oh, I really want to work on that pressure. And so it's, it's more enthusiastic the next day. It's got more flow the next day. It feels more juicy the next day if you actually abstain from it for a day. Now, like I said, these are just suggestions for all of us to experiment with. I have not figured this out. I still want you to focus on working on the important stuff and especially goal setting, which I did an episode about, when you feel your best. And then I want you to focus on resting as much as you need to rest. I know it feels like if you're building your business and it's not where you want it to be, which by the way, everybody I know is in that place. It feels like you can't rest. It feels like you can't stop. It feels like you got to keep going. But I'm telling you, pushing yourself is not the answer. So I would love to hear what works for you. Share it with me on Instagram using the hashtag explore your enthusiasm. I love to look at your photos there. Or come share it in our Facebook group. The Facebook group is Take Care of Yourself with Tara Swiger. This is a major part of taking care of yourself, which is a major part of building a sustainable business that lasts as long as you want it to. Thank you so much for listening, and I wish you a restful and enthusiastic day.